In a previous video, taking apart a camper in order to turn it into a trailer, I said that I was probably going to use the door of the pop-up camper for my garage because I had this tiny little opening that I knew it would fit. And it works great. Kind of. It opens the wrong direction. In other news, it also is only about five foot eight and I'm six foot two and my shoulders are wider than the door so you have to go through sideways oh well and from the inside we have big door bigger bigger door itty bitty door now I know I'm gonna get asked how I installed it because this is not a conventional setup by any means so here's the gist of the situation this door is in its own little one and a half inch box, basically. The door floats in its own welded together box. So rather than fight with the welded together box, what I did was I made an opening here with two by fours that is a half an inch extra on all sides. Then, so we've got a press lip right here on that so when this closes and the wind blows against it it seals it with the wind pressure so that's why the door is going the wrong direction for how I would like to have it open but right here as you can see we've got a piece of strapping here that is a one inch piece so that gives us a half an inch of leeway in each direction. And then in the frame, as we come around, there's a screw in all four corners with a washer on it. And that screw in all four corners allowed me to level out and set it where it is. And then I've gone around the outside with... Um, soft silicone so that it doesn't become hard and rigid it'll still float the window the door I'm sorry a little bit and that's what I did for that obviously I've got a little bit more tightening up to do before winter winter hits but at this point on the back side of the garage we've got our propane furnace set up over here, we actually have our Rebo battery set up that has 160 watts coming into it that runs the diesel heater that's on the side of the house. I'll post a link for the video down below if you want to see one of those diesel heater setups. We're going to be putting one in this shop also. But we're going to branch from this off and put a charging circuit back here so that it will trickle maintain another battery for this circuit plus on top of that we've got two brand spanking new rebos to be able to install so we're going to put these in parallel at the front of the garage and then we're going to put a trickle charger from this system to the back battery here, which this one's just taking the place of. Um, this one's a Viper system. These ones came out on Amazon like two and a half, three years or so ago. And I don't think this actually, it's supposed to be the same as a Rebo, but it really honestly doesn't seem to be. I, I don't know how to explain it other than I don't think I get as much runtime out of the Viper as I did out of the Rebos. But anyways, you're here in order to talk about this propane furnace. So if you pop this front plate off of your propane, you're going to find a model number right here. Now the Atwoods have been around forever. They got bought out, but they still are producing the Atwood brand. So if you type this and service manual into a Google search, you come up with this sheet here. You've got the stupid proof version, which is basically just a toggle switch that turns it on and off. And then you have a thermostat controlled version. So if we check on our thermostat controlled version, 
We have a ground, which is the black wire. We've got a always 12 volt, which should be the red wire if I remember right. Let's double check here. We got black and then we got red. And then when you come over here, so we've got always ground, we've got red, which is marked positive, and then we've got a thermostat controlled white wire coming into this that for some reason Coleman and a bunch of other companies after doing some research turn into orange in their wiring system. So I'm not sure why they do that, but anyways. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You take the one that is ground and you wire it to black. You take the one that is attached to the red and you wire it to your positive. Now, what do we do with the orange control wire? So the red wire is maintaining the thermostat control board that's behind this plate here. Your thermostat wire is controlling your propane solenoid and your firing circuit. So let's take this and let's pop this open. And this hose here, if you need one in order to set up one of these units, usually is sold on Amazon as a replacement for, um, what do they call those? Uh, the 99% supposedly efficient ventless. It's the hose system for a ventless propane system, which by the way, you do not want to use. Um, they produce moisture and literally everything in your shop will be rusted out in a matter of a season of using. So this is a much better idea than using a ventless heater, which is why people upgrade to furnaces instead of using ventless. A ventless system is about $150 to produce 16,000 BTUs. And these are like $600, but what you're paying for is no moisture getting added to your air. Anyways, so we've got our positive, we've got our negative, and we have our special Atwood Camper RV setup. It has a toggle switch up here that is for on and for off, and then it has a thermostat down here. And it's literally just... Either or, it does not matter. Just wire up a split in your orange wire right there, straight to it. And this toggles that clip right in there. You can see where it touches right there. So if I toggle this over, and these things suck. They take a lot of effort there to toggle. So now we can see that that piece is touching on the probe right there. So our circuit is complete. And if we slide this, we should trigger the furnace. Yep, there it goes. And now it's going to cycle the air for a little while, and then we're gonna hear the burner trigger. So that's that triggering. And we should hear the blower kick. Whoop. There we go. That was the burner. And we now have hot air starting to come out. So... We've used this now for roughly about two weeks and I wanted to wait to make this video until after we had used it long enough for me to be able to intellectually discuss it. From here to that wall is 28 feet. The non-insulated camper that it was designed to heat had a square footage equal 
to basically about this point in my garage. So if I come here, from right about here where this broom area is to there, that is about the same square footage as the non-insulated camper that it came out of. We've been out here at 40 degrees multiple times and we've easily gotten it to comfortable in a hoodie, almost comfortable in a t-shirt temperatures in this work area. On the other hand, if I rotate around, it is not enough to really affect this area over here. And you can still feel the heat draft because at 20 foot would be right about here, the peg of my bike. That to there, I can still feel the heat draft that is coming out of that thing. So this area here is at least hoodie temperature, even though it's 40 degrees outside. Just to give some perspective. And Jethro, who has always been a pansy about temperature, absolutely loves right about this distance from it. If he gets up in there, he seems to get a little overheating once that thing's fully cranked up. Now, on a side note, in the future, I will be installing this diesel heater. And that will be living right here so that they can both come off the same battery. I want the diesel heater so that I can run it in conjunction with this to bring everything up to temp and then be able to run this once I maintain temperature. These are noisy. They produce more BTU than the propane furnace, but they make like five times the amount of thrumming noise. Otherwise than that, that's where we're at right now. Hi, Jethro. You like your new propane furnace? You're a happy baby. You're starting to get okay with the impact wrenches and everything. And you're starting to walk around. Well, okay, fine. You're, you're walking like an ape around. You're not quite walking. But do you approve this installation? Agu? Okay, we're a goo approved.